to hear freshly unmarried Christian fundamentalist Marjorie Taylor Greene tell it. The earthquake that most of us felt on the East Coast was the result of God's wrath for our sins. Or maybe it was the result of the blockbuster jobs report out this morning that showed 303,000 new jobs were added in March instead of the 200,000 that were expected. That news left the folks over at the Fox Comfy Couch shook. Unemployment rate unexpectedly drops from 3.9%, which was a two-year high, to 3.8%. Immediate reaction in the market, uh, Maria, I am seeing futures moving a little bit higher, and that's all I'm getting at the moment. I'm trying to get my rates, but they're stronger than expected at the surface report. We're looking at a market that is up, but off of the highs, okay? We're losing steam, and we're losing steam fast. Fast. We're losing steam fast. Joining me now is Ali Velshi, MSNBC chief, cor chief correspondent and host of Velshi on MSNBC. Christina Greer. Run that again. <laughs> he is literally fresh on the, into the studio. <laughs> Christina Greer, political scientist and host of the Blackest Questions podcast. I've been on that. And Susan Del Percio, Republican strategist and MSNBC political analyst. And she still allows herself to be called a Republican. So I love do. that. Uh, Ali Velshi, you are up, sir. Okay. They were sad. They were sad. Yeah. I mean, one point, <laughs> you didn't play this part. But Maria actually said, the economy is strong, but is it too strong? Is it too strong? <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. So, you know, yeah. when, you, when you cover these things, some months it'll be good, some months it'll be bad. The, the interesting thing is usually when you get a strong employment report, stocks go down mm -hmm. because... Business owners think, oh, you know what, yeah, you like, it's, they're going to demand more wages and all that. <laughs> it's very hard to parse this economy and find the systemically broken parts. Yeah. It's just a good economy. Yeah. And this is tough for people who don't want it to be so. So then the question is, let's, let's talk the politics of it now for the Democrats and Republicans, for the Republicans. What are the politics of it? They can't say the economy is bad. It's not. They can't. Well, they shouldn't. Let me rephrase. Oh, okay. They should not. But yeah. it won't stop them. And they'll say inflation. Mm -hmm. And and here's the part that's hurting the Democrats is that there still is a narrative out there that the economy is not strong. And now add that we're seeing certain things that don't fall into the inflation index, yeah. like gasoline and housing costs, that are still going up and people feel it. So it, people are still feeling a harder economy, even yeah. though they're doing better. But I do believe it's all going to catch up in yeah. a couple of months because the economy is that strong that people are going to be like, Oh, wait, we're all kind of doing pretty well, good. Well, we drove in today, okay? My husband and I drove in today. Uh, my husband, brother, and I, we were all in the car. And as we're driving, all you see is the Biden bucks being spent all over. You see infrastructure projects going from here, from, you know, from Maryland to, to D.C. It's Biden bucks being spent everywhere. You can't go in an airport without seeing all of the, the, the spending. So at some point, does it catch up? Because it's true. Housing costs are still an issue. Mm -hmm. And look, billionaires buying up housing right. and then re-renting it is kind of an issue. But housing costs and affordability is still a problem. Right. But when we talk about the economy, the average American doesn't really know what the economy That's a good is. Point. Sure. They go to the polls because of pocketbook issues. Mm -hmm. So are my groceries more expensive? Mm -hmm. Right. Does gas cost four dollars versus three dollars? You know, is my rent going up? Mm -hmm. Are my wages keeping up with these things? I think the problem with the Biden administration is the same thing we saw with the Obama administration. Work is getting done. Yeah. Progress is there. But the articulation yeah. that all this infrastructure building that you're seeing, you. all these new jobs. Yeah. I did this. Yeah. And so, you know, you can't keep relying on Pete Buttigieg to go on Fox News right. and articulate your vision. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you need to name it something. Remember Barack Obama's America Rediscovery Back to Work Act? I mean, no yeah. one knew what it was. But instead of something that's simple, the New Deal, yeah. the Great Society, like, let's or name Donald it. Donald Trump, who said, I made it better. Yeah, it's or the stimmy, like stimmy, the things that stimmy people... Check. Yeah, that's stimmy it, check. Right? That's all Whether it's remember. true or not. And so Joe Biden and his allies, associates, and surrogates need to be clear and articulate what they have done, what they are doing, what they will do, yeah. those three things mm -hmm. in triumvirate, and just make it very clear. Very so clear and simple. When, when someone says, I don't know, you know, what have they done for right. me? It's like, you can answer very clearly, it. This you can is what they've done. But here's the question, because I, I am kind of obsessed with this, the question of how much of what we experience as inflation mm -hmm. is actually greed. Like, how much of it mm. is profit-taking? Yep. How much of it is billionaires buying up housing and re-renting it? We've seen how it. Much of we've it? seen it. That all of that is true. And we've seen companies, because last year there was this, this furor about theft in shops. Um, yeah, Shrinkage and, Target. and yeah. all that. Yeah, yeah. Lo and behold, they, I mean, I think Costco came out at the time and said, uh, we don't, we're, not, we're, not, we're not seeing this. Now everybody come out and said, we're not really seeing it. Yeah. But, you know, they had to make up costs because people were stealing things right, off the right. shelves. When prices go up, once you get the society 
uh, used to the fact whether they like it or not, the prices are going up, mm -hmm. then prices go up. Yeah. So your local uh, shop in your local restaurant, they are their prices are going up because wages are going up, but everybody thinks prices are going up so you can get away with it. Yeah. Right, but here's the kicker, is that when the president put out the Inflation Reduction Act, People, that translates into prices going down. Prices don't go down. They don't, right, they don't. If they don't want to. start going I mean, down, you've exception. actually got something wrong with you. Yeah. Right. Right. Except for supply chain issues. Yes. I'll put that aside. Correct. But so that in lies part of the problem with the messaging is yeah. that people expected prices yeah. to but go down. Let, let me tell you one thing that is going up. Well, eggs are always going up. I have to play this because the price of uh, my pillow has gone up because now you have to include <laughs> a donation. I have to play this Lara Trump sound. Take a look. $25 extravaganza, two-pack multi-use MyPillows, just $25. MyPillow sandals, $25. Their six-pack towel sets, you guessed it, $25. Their new four-pack dish towels, $25. The whole chair. Yeah. Right. Is that, real? is that for real? Like, yes. I know. This is, I mean, but, you know, we laugh, but it's our democracy. We laugh, but, you know, Donald Trump and his sycophants are, are inching closer and closer to the White House if we aren't clear about the vision yeah. that, that Biden is putting forward. I mean, the fact that we have family members now running the RNC, mm -hmm. yeah. we would always say, like, look at those other countries. That's, that's a ridiculous. Little, yeah, that's a right? little so other country. It's, it's a little other like, country. But yeah. we, we've always, you know, sort of uh, had a, a myth about who we are as a nation. Right. Yeah. And Donald Trump has exposed that. I mean, yeah. he's shown that right. the emperor has no clothes. And so now that we have his daughter-in-law yeah. running the RNC, it may not work out for them the way they planned, but if it does, yeah. we're in a really dangerous. If situation. he gets back in, you might have to swipe your card to get into the White House. Like I can see, like that might be the way it has to go. I never thought I would talk so much about foam pillows in my life. But it this, is, is, this guy keeps coming back. Huh? And they're actually crap pillows. They're great. Yeah, they're just you a bad foam pillow. They're a bad foam pillow. Um, but let's talk a little bit about this idea of renaming Dulles. Now, Dulles is not the best airport. It might be the worst airport in America. Uh, the uh, Republicans are like, let's name it after Donald Trump. <laughs> I love the fact that it's named after one of the most diabolical secretaries of state who right. destroyed Iran. Uh, and uh, much of Central but let's, America. But let's make that worse. But let's make it worse. Yeah. Well, so the Democrats have said instead, let's name a prison after Trump. Thoughts, thoughts, right. thoughts, name a prison in Miami. That is a fantastic <laughs> one. Bernie huh? Carrick has one. Bernie Carrick has a prison? A prison named, named, named after, after him? him? Yes, what? they had to remove it when he went to jail. But yeah, it was a New oh, it was York before he went to Carrick prison. prison. <laughs> went to jail, but it was up there for a while. I was wondering when you see like hospital wings named after people. Yeah. person has to go to the hospital. They get to you get to talk do about that get, all the time. Do they get to talk about? I wonder it. if it's the same thing with prisons. It's, well, I think this is a great opportunity for the nerds at the table just to talk about Alan Dulles and also his his uh, brother. It was John Foster Dulles, I yep. think, and Alan Dulles, and both of them were involved in destroying Guatemala and Iran. Yeah. So I feel like that's important, and that's given me the opportunity. Well, I mean, to thank we've you already they've already renamed National Reagan, which I refuse yeah, to call I, Reagan. I call it DC. Um, but I, I do think that the naming of airports and institutions is really important. And so, you know, something like Dallas, as we rethink the naming of certain institutions, yeah. it's, it's a very valid conversation for us to have. But Donald Trump, because he's still an active member in politics, yes. but he's also still an active client or yeah. defendant yeah. in several yeah. court cases across several states, yeah. I don't think we should be having that conversation. At all. I would much rather, honestly, and you know we both have ties to Florida, I would much rather the Florida Democrats focus up, maybe yeah. think about how you can deliver Florida for the Democrats in 2024 True. and get a governor. Super fair. All right. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it you tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.